In this video, I'm going to go through a leaving cert pass paper question on organic chemistry. It's 2016, question 8. I'm going from ethane to chloroethane, that's a substitution reaction, a free radical substitution. Describe in detail the mechanism for the reaction using UV light. Okay, so I'm going to go through that now. So the reaction that we're talking about is the reaction of ethane, which is C2. H6 and chlorine in the presence of UV light to form chloroethane. And substitution reaction because we're substituting one of the chlorines there for one of the hydrogens in here. So we have an initiation step to begin with, and this is where the UV light homolytically breaks apart the chlorine molecule. So Cl2 just breaks into two chlorine radicals. And I'm just going to draw my radical with a dot. So just going to describe on the side here what happens. You've got a chlorine molecule. And I'm just going to draw the dot and cross diagram for each of the chlorine atoms when they're covalently bonded. OK. And all that happens, the UV light breaks apart the shared pair and each of the electrons just goes straight back onto the chlorine atoms. So you're left with two chlorine atoms in their original state. Of course, these are not very stable. That's why chlorine exists as a diatomic molecule. Okay, so you form two of those. Now, free radicals themselves are quite reactive. So what they can do is they can react with other molecules and in many ways, its chemistry is hard to control. But that's just showing you what is happening in each step. The UV light breaks apart the shared electron pair, and you form two chlorine atoms. And we're going to call them free radicals. So I'm just going to put that to the side. So the next step is called propagation. And that's where our free radical is going to go and do something there. So we formed a chlorine free radical here two of them in fact and the first propagation step is where one of the free radicals will react with the other reactant in the chemical equation so that was our ethane C2H6 and all it does is and I've described this in detail on the website all it does is the free radical will abstract hydrogen atom and you will get another homolytic breaking of the hydrogen atom and its carbon atom covalent bond, where you get even breaking of the electrons. And so you form a carbon radical. So they react, and it just takes a hydrogen atom away. So you form HCl. With a radical on the carbon. So just to explain that in a little bit more detail here, the chlorine radical sees the ethane and what happens is that electron and the hydrogen electron come together and form a shared pair of electrons so we form hydrogen chloride the molecule and then this electron gets broken off and forms onto the ethane you're left with HCl and this radical with there. Now we formed a different radical. And the HCl is a molecule which won't react again here. But this other radical that you formed, as it's a radical, you've got a carbon with a single electron on it. So it's quite reactive. That will go and react with something else. So that's what's going to happen next. So there's a second propagation step whereby that radical that you made, C2H5, and I'm just drawing the radical on a carbon because that's where it actually is, reacts with the other reactant, which is chlorine molecules. Okay, And as that reacts, we form this radical just forms a chemical bond with one of the chlorines. And you form C2H5. 
H5Cl, which is our desired product, and we reform our chlorine radical there, our reactive species. So again, just to show you how that happens, you've got C H H H C H H with a radical and you've got chlorine and what's going to happen here is that and that are going to so a single headed arrow I should have said at the start that shows the movement of one electron so what you have here is you have this product which is the one you want and you have reformed a chlorine radical okay so we form the desired product here so normally once you form the desired product in the mechanism you're kind of finished but because this is radical chemistry there's a lot of stuff that's still there that needs to be killed off essentially so we have these termination steps which are basically steps that allow us to finish the reaction by not having any more radicals in the termination steps all that's going to happen is our free radicals are going to react with themselves and you're going to be left with neutral molecules so the first one will be our chlorine you could say chlorine radical could react with a chlorine radical in the reverse of our initiation step to form chlorine molecule we could have an ethyl radical and a chlorine radical reacting to form the desired product there and lastly you could actually have two ethyl radicals coming together you've got an ethyl radical reacting with another ethyl radical and what happens here is you do when when these two radicals combine you get C4H10 which is butane so this is our mechanism all you need to remember are the steps in blue there so it's important to try and remember them all because that's the best way of getting all the marks in the exam so we'll just look at the next question now explain the presence of a little tetraethyl lead on this conversion okay so tetraethyl lead what that does is that speeds up the reaction as it provides readily available ethyl radicals so if there are more ethyl radicals there the reaction will speed up going back here to our questions ester C which is here is formed when A is heated with methanoic acid and a few drops of sulfuric acid acting as a catalyst. Name C and draw its structure. Okay, so we can just do this here. We have ethanol is reacted with methanoic acid.